Andrew, beseeching the Lord that he would not permit him to be taken down from the cross. He was enveloped in a great light from heaven, and when this light faded away, he gave up the ghost. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is a great symbol for anyone here in the life of St. Andrew who wishes to come to the monastery and bang on its door and to seek admittance. St. Andrew was hanging upon that cross for days, symbolically for those who seek to be on the cross of religious life for decades. And the most important fact about that is that that heavenly light enveloped the presence of that dying victim of his divine Savior. And as the light was fading away, then he gave up the ghost. We pray that this may be for each sister here, that they may persevere until death and their resolve. So suppose someone like today would like to come and knock on the door and ask, could I be one of you? Suppose they wish to form part of this life. Wouldn't that soul wish to have a piece of advice before stepping into the door? What would it be like? What would my life be like? Who can guarantee me happiness and fulfillment? Well, imagine if we had St. Teresa of Avila standing at the door. Now, I know she is not a Benedictine. Uh, she's a Carmelite. But I like St. Teresa because she is Catholic to the core. And she's a reliable source of inspiration and knowledge. When I lived last century, when I lived in Spain, uh, all the people were so blunt and honest. I don't know if it's still the case today. I'm sure it is. But especially in that region of Spain, Castilla, uh, the people are down to earth even to this day. So imagine five centuries ago when you have a choleric, saintly choleric, St. Teresa of Avila. She'll give it to you straight and therefore uh, we ask her uh, what is it that I can think of today as I embark on this fruitful discernment so I quote and this is from her um, little work called Conceptions of the Love of God Listen to this. It's almost exactly what St. Andrew spoke about in all the antiphons and all the matins of today. All this passionate giving, a total understanding of his vocation. I quote from St. Teresa, Teresa. Great is this favor, O my Jesus, and this delectable feast, this precious wine that thou giveth me, one drop of which makes me forget all created things and withdraw from creatures and withdraw from myself. And no longer desire the satisfactions and joys which until now my senses have longed for. Great is all this in unmerited by me. And then she gets into her Spanish mode. And she's like a bullfighter now. And she taunts and dares her enemies. She says, let worldlings come with all their possessions, their riches, their delights, their honors, their feasts. Even if all these could be enjoyed without the trials 
that they bring in their train, which is impossible, they could not in a thousand years cause the happiness enjoyed in a single moment by a soul whom thou hast elevated to this state. So you see how convinced St. Teresa was, a consecrated virgin to the heart of Christ. Like everything was just flimsy tinsel in comparison to the great love that Christ has showed her soul from the very beginning. So let us reproach the source of her assurance in this tabernacle during this holy sacrifice of the Mass. Jesus that comes physically upon the altar. And let us hear these words as Christ comes to the communion rail at some point, and he'll say, crying out, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. If we think this is a mirage, all we have to do is look at the life of the apostle, St. Andrew, here Matins, it says, when he was speaking to his enemy, Aegeus, who was about to kill him, he said, every day I come to the altar and I offer up the sacrifice of the divine lamb. There it is. There's the source of this clinging to Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.